sure he is right there. Well, good morning, and welcome to worship here at First United Methodist Church in Monticello. It's great to see you here. Thankful that you have uh, joined us for this time of worship. For those of you that are worshiping with us online, once again, I want to thank you for joining us as you do uh, every single week, but we would like to know that you are here, so whatever platform you are joining us on, whether it be Facebook or YouTube uh, please let us know, check in, uh, let us know you are here, and if you have any prayer uh, requests, then you can uh, put that in the, uh, the chat as well. Um, if you're present with us in the building, as once again, I draw your attention to the attendance books that you see on the tables. Also on the table there is uh, information. This is uh, uh, UWF Sunday. I have to remember that. They have changed their names, and sometimes it's, it's hard to, uh, to keep that straight. But this is a day that we celebrate uh, women in ministry and what women bring to the life of the church and how they impact both our church, our community, and the kingdom of God. So uh, a bulletin is there along with some information about our local uh, circles of UWF. Uh, we will be seeing uh, some women who are participating in this service uh, who will be doing uh, ushering and things like that for our offering. And then in our second service, uh, we'll be taking more of a role in the service in, in uh, reading uh, responsive readings and call to worship and also doing a uh, presentation. You'll see that there's a banner and a board here that gives a little information about what our local unit is doing. And we are excited about the work uh, that um, our women in, in our church continue to, uh, to provide and share with us. Also on this side of the room, there are the greeting cards that uh, we always ask people to sign, and those will be sent out uh, to those that are indicated uh, later on this week. But as we begin this time of worship this morning, uh, would you pause with me as we enter into a time of prayer? Eternal God, we have gathered here in this place this morning as members of your community to worship you as our living God. You have called us to be in community with each other. So we pray that you will enable us to center ourselves so that we can be renewed so that we can find a deeper commitment to mission and ministry to those who are in need, to the least of these, here as well as around the world. Equip us this day with your Holy Spirit so that we can witness to your love, your power, your healing, and your reconciliation. We desire new life, and we are thankful that we can gain that in your Son, Jesus Christ. So inspire us once again to be the tellers of the old story that Jesus has come and that Jesus is among us and that Jesus walks with us through the valleys of our lives. And he gives us life, not only life, but life abundant, life that is full, and we are grateful. So hear us as we sing, hear us as we worship. May it be honoring to you, and may it be strengthening to us. And we pray all of this in the name of Christ our Lord. Amen. And now let us stand, and let us turn our attention to the worship of God.
say and do Be found by my faith in you I lift up holy hands and sing Let the praises ring Oh Lord my God To you I give my hands Oh Lord my God
of prayer as well as celebration, I want to invite our online community. Please add your own prayer concerns and celebrations to the comment section of this video. Our prayer team gets together every week, and truly it's an honor and it's a blessing to share your burdens with you. You can email us anytime, prayer at fumcmonticello.org. A couple of things to let you know about. Some of you may be aware that apparently there's a citywide cleanup next Saturday. And so Mayor Akers reached out to me yesterday and said, hey, do y'all want to help? So I'm going to ask if the church family would like to be involved with that, show up next Saturday. Saturday, we will send a one call out. Uh, Mayor Akers said that he would get all the supplies for us and we'll pick them up. But sounds like a great citywide project because certainly we see lots of trash. And so excited for us to be a part of that. And if you're back from your spring break, uh, fun and excitement, um, come by and help us. This week, we do not have our Lenten Bible study because it's spring break. So plan to come back next week for that. Next Sunday is a big Sunday for us. Please invite your friends. Plan to be in worship. Our newly appointed bishop, Bishop Laura Merrill, will be with us. Not only at the 9 a.m. service, but at the 11 a.m. service. Excuse me. She's going to be preaching. Between the two, we'll have a reception out here in the front of the Family Life Center so you can meet her. Y'all, she's charming. She's very, very approachable, just as kind as she can be. So plan to be here next Sunday for that. Uh, notice our updated prayer list. Um, you see the beautiful rose on the altar. We have a new baby among us. His name is Parker Kent Colburn, and he was born on Wednesday. He got here just a little bit early, 5 pounds, 2.5 ounces. His proud parents, Jonathan and Katie Colburn. His proud grandmother is Robin Johnson. His proud grandfather is Kent Davis. And then proud uh, big sister, Lily Kate, and proud big brother, Ryder. He's going to spend a few days in the hospital. Those of us that know the NICU journey, he's going to be in there for just a little bit, and then he'll get to come home. But keep him in your prayers, because for those of us that know what it's like to not bring a baby home, it is very hard on us mamas and daddies. And so keep them in your prayers. Um, Andy Boykin and Sophie Joy Mendez continue to make progress with fighting their brain cancer. Continue to hold up those children and their families in your prayers. And then yesterday was a really special day. We celebrated the life of Bart Bynum. And if you were here, it was a special, special celebration. And then the ladies of our church just outdid themselves with the reception. And so continue to remember um, their family, Miss Judy and her children. And then... <clears throat> Sue Anderson's um, childhood best friend passed away last night, and she's been on our prayer list, Kathy Kimenitz, and so continue to pray for, uh, pray for her family as well. I've probably missed something. Anything I can remember up here, prayer concerns or celebrations? All right, let's go to God in prayer. Most gracious and loving Lord, we pause this morning to say thank you. 
Thank you for the gift of another day, another chance to praise you, to offer ourselves to be the hands and feet of Jesus. We come this morning not just seeking answers, but seeking strength and courage for the days ahead. God, you know our struggles and you know our grief. You know, God, you know our pain. Help us to be the people that you have called us to be. Help us to seek justice and peace, love and mercy. God, help us to be kind to others. We thank you for the beauty of your creation, for the beauty of spring with the hint of winter, for the privilege of caring for it. God, help us to be better stewards of your creation and all that is in it. Give us the courage and the persistence to work for justice for those who cannot defend themselves. And God, help us to hear the cry of the needy. May our ears, our hearts, our eyes, and our hands be open to those that you would have us to help. Pour out your Holy Spirit on us, that in all things we will seek you first. Forgive us for failing to put you first. May you continue to reign in our hearts. All these things, dear God, we ask in the name of Jesus, who taught us to pray and prays with us now. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. <clears throat> for thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Brother Brian mentioned that today is United Methodist Women in Faith Sunday. And you've noticed our ladies that were greeters this morning. We're going to have a lot of ladies in worship service next service as well. I want you to be aware of all the opportunities. And there's a piece of paper that you may have seen on your table we have a Wilma Hankin circle, a Libby Annulus circle, circle number three, circle number five. And a new thing we have is called mission and service helpers. No circle, no meetings, just opportunity to do mission work and to help. And so God calls us to be the hands and feet of Jesus. And as faithful United Methodists, we give of our time, our talents, our gifts, our witness, and our service. And so I implore you to give of your service as you also give of your gifts every Sunday, which we can't do ministry without you. So I want to invite our ladies that are coming up to take up offering to come forward. And we thank you for the opportunities you continue to give knowing that there is never a gift too small because God just does amazing things with all that we give. Let's pray. Thank you, ladies. Gracious God, thank you for the opportunity to give. God, use these gifts for your kingdom. Bless the gifts, God, and bless the giver. In Jesus' name, amen. Hey. 
We have spent the past several weeks in a sermon series on the uh, Pilgrim's Progress, uh, the classic text uh, written by John Bunyan uh, back in the uh, 1600s. Uh, I've been uh, kind of uh, sensing uh, in, my, in my spirit that it may be time to kind of draw this sermon series to a close since we are moving into Holy Week and, and Easter and all that that entails. And I say that because here in the beginning of May, we're going to be starting another sermon series on the gospel discipleship. And we're going to give you the opportunity to determine and discern through this sermon series uh, who you are. Uh, because all of us, and there's, all, there's a myriad of, of personality tests out there, but, but this one is specifically tailored towards the church. Because all of us fit in a certain discipleship type. There's, there's Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. Uh, and we'll unpack this a little bit more. But I, I took the test the other day to see whether anything had changed and nothing changed. I, I am true blue a Markan, and that means that a Markan is more spirit-led. And you get into something and you kind of feel like, I'm done with this. And I've often wondered why a lot of times I get in the middle of a sermon series and I kind of lose interest. It's not that I lose interest in the Bible. It's just like, this is not where we need to be anymore. So we just move on and I don't have any problem with it. We hadn't completed it, but hey, who cares? Let's move on and let's do what God, I think, is, uh, is, is asking and calling us to do. So I, I think that today is, is a fitting uh, conclusion to this uh, sermon series because we're in a valley today. And who of us has not been in a valley? I mean, some of us may be in valleys right now. And we may be in the valley, but guess what's going to happen in a couple of weeks? Easter. Easter. So we're in the valley but then Easter comes. So the valley is not permanent. There may be lots of valleys, but they're never permanent. Because just in the midst of that valley, guess what? Jesus shows up. But Jesus doesn't just show up. Jesus has always, always been there. It's just that at certain points, we are more aware of the fact that Jesus is there with us. So if you'll pause with me, let's enter into a time of prayer. Gracious Lord, like Nicodemus, we come to the Word this day with many questions. Like the Pharisees, we can be captivated by correctness. We can be intent on right answers. So as we turn to your Word this day, Spirit of God, do not let our desire for information dominate our need for transformation. Let us hear the word and be moved to greater faith and obedience. We pray this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Okay, so our scripture reading this morning comes out of the 23rd Psalm. And I'm going to be reading this out of the King James Version of the Bible because where better to read the 23rd Psalm than King James Version? just doesn't fit. You know, these newer translations, you read it and you're like, what? That's good, but this is, I think, this, this is how God spoke it to us. Or this is, a, you know, David wrote in King James English, maybe. I don't know. But here we go. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. He maketh me to lie down in green pastures. He leadeth me beside the still waters. He restoreth my soul. He leadeth me in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Thou preparest a table before me in the presence of mine enemies. Thou anointest my head with oil, my cup runneth over. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. My friends, this is the word of God for us, the people of God. Thanks be to God. So after Christian, 
left the valley of humiliation. His path now leads him to even a more, even a darker and more foreboding place. And this is often the case with the Christian life. As one period of difficulty often follows another. Because I think that life is a series of valleys. Yes, we get those mountaintop experiences. Yes, we get those euphoric moments in our lives where we feel that we have conquered, where we feel that we have arrived, but most of the time, life is lived in the valley. Do you agree? We just move from one valley to the other. And that's the same thing that our friend Christian uh, experiences in our text. And in these times, in the times lived in the valley, we can be vulnerable to both temptation, discouragement, and feeling isolated, and feeling as if God has left us. But God will not desert His people in the valley. God never has, and God never will. And as Christian learns in our text for this morning, God's faithfulness is often revealed most poignantly in the midst of doubt and hardship. When we are going through those periods of doubt, when we are going through those periods of hardship, we find that God is most often revealed. God makes God's self aware to us in the midst of those dark times. And so while one might have expected Christian to enjoy a period of tranquility and rest after his battle against Apollyon, that was not the case. He departed the valley of humiliation and prepared to follow the road into the valley of the shadow of death. Now, two men ran toward him, and they urged him, you got to turn around. This is not any place you want to be. But in spite of the dangers that laid ahead, he was determined to reach the celestial city, even if the road ahead was dangerous. Now, Bunyan in our text describes this valley as dark and narrow marked by sounds of constant shrieking and howling and home to hobgoblins and dragons. And while this may be um, metaphorical language, this is reality. Because when we are in the valleys of life, oftentimes it seems like these are the most difficult times that we have ever experienced. If anything can go wrong, it is going to go wrong. It is dark. It is desolate. It seems like there is no hope. And the path through the valley for Christian was surrounded by dangers on both sides. It says on the right, there was a deep ditch into which the blind lead the blind. On the left was a quagmire out of which a person cannot pull himself. And whenever Christian tried to avoid one of these hazards, he was in danger of stepping into the other. You ever been there? Seems like in the valley, you you, you can't do anything right. If you do one thing, it's the wrong thing. And if you do something else, it's the wrong thing. And it seems like it gets darker and most desolate. Life can be like that at times. The life experience is not easy. Because we live in a world that is full of brokenness. We live in a world that is full of pain. We live in a world where we look out and we, we see that it's just bad. And whatever we try to do to avoid the hazards of life, sometimes it seems like we just step into it. And this valley does not represent physical death, but it represents spiritual death despair. And oftentimes we are tempted in the midst of those dark times to give up. 
to just throw our hands up and say, I'm done with it. I've been there. How much you've been there as well. Troubling times. Hard times. And I love the way that our psalmist puts it. You know, he says these words. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He maketh me to lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside still waters. He restores my soul. And then he says this, Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death. Doesn't whitewash it. You will, I will, all of us will walk through those dark times, those dark valleys. And just when it seems like we're out of one valley, guess what? There's another one that's right in our path. But then there's a turn. And there's a turn for Christian and there's a turn for us. He says, Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. While Christian plodded on through the darkness while he was looking to the right and looking to the left and fearing for his life and for his sanity, he hears something. Outside of all of the voices of negativity, outside of all of the voices of all the howling and the shrieking and all that was going on in the midst of his darkness, he hears something. He hears the voice of someone else realizes that he's not alone, that he's not alone in the midst of this valley, that there is something else there with him, something other than the darkness, something other than that which is howling around him and shrieking around him. He realizes that there is another pilgrim ahead of him he begins to realize that others were in the valley with him and he was not alone. He was not there by himself. And he begins to think. And he begins to reason. And he begins to say to himself that if God had attended to others in the valley, then God would attend to him as well. So then hope begins to spring up in him. And he begins to say, I need to find this person. I need to discover who this is that's in the valley ahead of me. And so he begins to seek frantically for this person. And he hopes that he can catch up with him so that he can have companionship on the journey. You know, the interesting thing is, is that we all go through a valley. But none of us go through the valley of alone because we're all on the same journey. We're all in the same valley. We're all in the same place. We all live here. There's nowhere else to go. We're on the journey with one another. And so let's run up and catch up with one another and walk hand in hand through that valley, encouraging one another. And, and here's the interesting thing about the person that was ahead of him. His name was Faithful. We all need someone who is faithful to walk with us and encourage us as we go through the valleys of life. So he catches up to Faithful. And they began to walk through this valley alone. They began to walk through this not alone but together. And it makes the valley just a little bit more bearable. Yes, it's still tough. Yes, it's still hard. But he goes through this valley with someone else to encourage him, to care for him, to pick him up when he's fallen down. And so as the sun begins to rise, Christian looks back and he sees the dangerous terrain through which God had led him. And when he reaches the end of the valley, he passed by a cave where two giants had lived for many years. And he begins to see that 
that this valley, even though it was difficult, he was able to make it through. And he had a Christian friend that was with him. And when they left this valley, they began to sing about God's deliverance as they went on their way. And I, I, I continue to be captured by the words of, of the 23rd Psalm which echo what's going on in this text. Listen again to these words. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I fear no evil, for thou art with me. Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Thou preparest a table before me in the presence of mine enemies. Right there in the midst of the valley. God doesn't wait till we get out of the valley to prepare the table for us. He does it right there in the midst of the valley. He provided for Christian what Christian needed in the valley, and God will do the same for us. Right in the midst of the valley, his rod and staff comfort us. Right in the midst of the valley, he prepares a table before us. In the presence of mine enemies, right in the valley, God anoints our head with oil, and our cup runs over. Surely, Goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. Through the valley of humiliation, through the valley of the shadow of death, up on the mountaintop, surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. All of us find moments in our lives where we feel beaten down, where we feel forgotten, where we feel despondent. But the good news is we're never alone. God is always with us, and God is always providing for us. Sometimes all we got to do is look up. All we got to do is look around. All we have to do is listen not listen to the voices of the world around us, but listen. Listen for those who are right there with us. Listen for those who are encouraging us. Listen for those who are praying for us. Listen for God. And when we listen for God, we will always hear God. Oftentimes in the midst of the valley, and it's, it's, it's difficult because we look at our situation. We look at what's going on. You know, several years ago, I, I, I began to uh, pray uh, for individuals and, and even myself who were going through uh, deep and, and dark times. And, and one of my prayers was this. Help us to see. Part the clouds so that we can see your goodness and your grace, and your glory. Because times may be dark. The light is always shining. But oftentimes it, it, it becomes eclipsed by the darkness. It doesn't mean it's not shining. It's just harder to see. So let us, in the midst of the life in which we live, look up and look around. And there we will discover God with us in the midst of our journey. In the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, let's pray. Oh God, our prayer this day is that you will help us to take what has been said this day and we can begin to believe it in our hearts. And, oh God, we pray that what we believe in our hearts, we can then begin to practice in our lives. Looking around us in the midst of the darkness and seeing the goodness that is there and seeing you who is ever walking with us. We are thankful for your presence. We are thankful for your love. In the name of Christ our Lord, we pray. Amen.
As we stand to sing our final song of this morning, I, I trust that, that we can all truly make this a, a time of commitment. Whatever it is that we need to commit to doing, maybe it's professing faith in Christ, maybe it's coming back to Christ, maybe it's uniting in membership or fellowship with this church, maybe you just need to simply pray. Pray to God in the midst of the valley that you are in that you can see the light of Christ shining, that you can see the friends that are there with you, and you can commit yourself to the God who has committed himself to you. Whatever it is, I pray that we will not let this moment pass us by without doing what God is calling us to do. Let us stand and let us sing. my God, in you I put my trust. Oh Lord my God, in you I put my hope. Oh Lord my God, in you I put my trust. Oh Lord my God, Friends, we have truly this day been in the presence of Jesus. Let us continue to abide in that presence, to live in that presence, and to share Jesus with others. As we go through this week, let us be reminded that we do not go through life alone, but we go through life, the presence of Jesus around us and in us and among us. Go forth. In the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen.